Once upon a time, there was a guy who couldn't crush a can. Brian is trying to be cool. He's succeeding. He's almost there, but everyone else can crush cans. I can. If you can't use your bronze, why not hire some brains? Hey, smart guy! Due to recent advances in desolidification theory, the power to crush cans without undue physical exertion is now in the power of everyday citizens like yourself! Sick. Come with me! I gotta know, how are we ever gonna crush the can without using these guns? We're gonna get the atmospheric pressure to do our work for us! Sweet. Imagine these people are air molecules, and the wall is the side of our can. Air is a gas made up of molecules. They are constantly bouncing off of you, the can, each other, walls, and everything else. When they bounce off of you, they exert some force. Pressure is the number and strength of those impacts on a certain area. Or another way of saying it is, pressure is force divided by area. Atmospheric pressure is caused by these air molecules bouncing off one another and surfaces. When each air molecule hits into something, the impact is very small. But when zillions of air molecules hit the wall, the force is a lot bigger. Atmospheric pressure, the sum of all these tiny molecular collisions, adds up to be 14.7 pounds per square inch. That means for every inch, there are 14 pounds of pressure. 14.7 pounds, that's not that much. That's only over one square inch. They're nearly 3,000 square inches over your whole body, so that comes out to about 45,000 pounds! Since air is both inside and outside the can, and the pressure is the same, the wall does not move. Well, what if we remove the air molecules on one side? We're going to do this in the lab. We're going to take the air out of the can and create a vacuum. Then, atmospheric pressure will be the same on the outside of the can, but there is no air inside the can to balance that pressure. Let's get suited up and go to the lab! Okay, we're ready to commence. Alright, let's get this party started. Right. Quickly. Right. We're gonna put a little bit of water in this can and we're gonna set it right on the burner like so. Alright, here's our can. We begin by putting a little bit of water into the bottom of the can like so. Then we place it over a heat source and let it come to a boil. Water vapor begins to fill the can as it evaporates. Oh, it's getting hot in there. And humid. Now the can is filled mostly with water vapor, but we can change that vapor back into a liquid by cooling it down. We'll place it in an ice bath. Chillin'. This is what happened. When the sides of the can cooled, the water vapor inside the can condensed into liquid onto the side, which created a vacuum. Remember, we only put a little bit of water into the bottom of the can, so the liquid water took up significantly less volume, which crushed that can. Oh. Oh. Let's go back to our air molecule friends. Now we've put water vapor molecules inside the can. They're green, and the air molecules are still outside. When cooled, the water vapor condenses on the side of the can into water droplets, seen here as blue. This creates a vacuum. Oh, gee whiz, air pressure is powerful. I mean, I want to be the coolest cat in town. That's right, Brian. Just remember, pressure is force divided by area, and safety never takes a holiday. Man, we've got mad skills. Oh, yeah.